Hey guys, so my Grindle worms have pretty bad mite infestation going on. They had a little bit of mites and you know I was just ignoring it because I was planning to buy a new culture and get rid of all these other ones. Or actually I had bought a new culture and I was keeping it far away from these and it still got infested with mites so um, mites really aren't harmful as far as the fish and they don't really hurt the worms but they outcompete the worms for food so the fish will actually eat them but it's really hard to kind of what's the word I'm looking for it, collect them to harvest and feed to the fish so um, I did a little bit of looking online and one thing I, f I saw was that if you put a little bit of flour, a dish of flour inside the culture, the mites will go into there and I guess eat the flour and die. So we're going to try that out. You're supposed to use self-rising flour but I don't have any self-rising flour so I'm going to make my own. All you do is you get a cup of regular flour, you add a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and then, or wait, sorry, quarter teaspoon of salt and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So I'm going to mix that up. I've got a couple little dishes over here, or I guess they're actually really lids and stuff. And we're going to put them in the cultures and then we'll see if there's any results from trying this out. Okay, so I have my homemade self-rising flour mixed up. And you can just see all the mites. It's horrible. So, I'm going to set this in here I wish I had like a shallower container I'll just have to see if these work I don't really have any like milk jugs or anything that I can use I don't buy milk enough to need a gallon of it at a time so um, hopefully they'll be able to crawl into this otherwise mm, I'll have to try something else maybe I could put it inside of this let me try that a little bit inside of the the lid. I use these plastic lids to collect the worms. So we'll see if they'll crawl in there. And we'll check back. Supposedly after a couple days you should be able to look in the flower and see a lot of dead bodies of the mites. So um, we're gonna see if this works. If it does, that'll be awesome. I can get my Grindle worm production back going again good so I can at least feed my fish until I can get a clean culture. And this time, I guess I'm just going to throw all of these away as soon as I get a clean culture. I tried to get a new culture and just keep it separate so that I could get it going really good and then throw all of these away. But that backfired and the fact that somehow I still managed to contaminate it with mites and you can see I kept that culture in a um, pillowcase tied up so the mites must have got in there somehow I don't know how but probably on my hand or something so we're gonna see if this works and then in the meantime I'll see if I can't beg a culture off one of my friends or order one online and get it going again because grindle worms are really a staple around here and I can't really afford to not have them because they're so essential to the growing fry. So I'm going to finish putting the rest of these in my other cultures and then um, we'll check on these again tomorrow. Painting the bottom of this two and a half gallon. Normally I use spray paint, but I'm out of spray paint and it's a little too cold outside still to um, 
do spray paint outside, so I'm just using some acrylic paint I have. Whoops, drop some on the floor. That's fine. Um, the reason I paint the bottom of my spawn tanks a dark color is because it reduces reflection and so it makes it easier for me to see the fry on the bottom see any uneaten food on the bottom and stuff like that so if you notice in my videos all of my tanks my bare bottom tanks are painted black on the bottom and this is just because I found that black makes it easier to see fry and stuff without seeing reflections. So, just gonna put a crude coat of paint on here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just, you know, get most of it. And then I'll let it dry. This is the last one I have been doing this slowly over the past several months as I empty a tank for whatever reason, you know, moving a spawn or, you know, whatever reason. As I take my tanks down, I've been painting them. So, this was the last one. Alright. That's good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. I might come back and put another coat on there. But now the bottom of this will be much easier to see. Alright, and I'll show you why I prefer black versus a non-painted background in just a second. Okay, so if we look at Cheeky's tank, it's not painted on the bottom. Um, it's just clear. So, you know, if you look from the top, you can see below to the stand. But the reason I don't like this when it comes to Tiny Fry is you can see her reflection on the bottom. Now, she's a big fish, so it's easy to see that there's just one fish. But if you have, you know, a hundred fry on the bottom and they're all reflecting, it can make it really hard to see where the fry is and where the reflection is. So when you're trying to siphon up the bottom, it can make it really hard. Whereas, if you look over here, with the matte bottom, it's much easier to see where the fish are and where the detritus is, so I can avoid sucking up fish when I'm siphoning. Even little fry like that one. There's still a little bit of a um, reflection, but it's a lot better. So it makes it a lot easier to see so I can siphon up really quickly. The reason I don't have gravel in the bottom of these tanks is because they're always changing. Sometimes, you know, right now this is a guppy colony and guppies would be fine with gravel, but if I decided to turn it into a grow out tank for bettas, I need no substrate so I can do water changes really easily and see the bottom. So that's why I have bare bottom tanks. You see they're all painted black. Even these guys. Oh, nope, that one's not done either, so I'll have to empty that one out. I thought I'd done that one. So, once the other one dries, I'll empty this one out and do it, and then they'll all be done for sure. Also, redid the beta bowl. Um, only because I'm taking the wood that was in here and the java moss, not java moss, java fern, and using it for another project I'm starting tomorrow or possibly Tuesday. I put the little red guy in here with the broken fins because his fins will heal easier if he's not getting a bunch of 100% water changes. So in a cycled tank, he doesn't need to be constantly getting water changes. Put one of my purple mystery snail babies in there with him and 
some valicinaria, which is just a placeholder. I'll find some other kind of plants I want to play around with and put them in here. But cleaned out the sand really well and just scrubbed everything down. It's still clearing back up, but I think it looks okay. With this much light on it, that valcinaria will grow like crazy. But we'll see how it does. So that's probably it for today. I didn't really have anything special I was doing. Oh, I did want to talk about my jars. I keep getting the question of where do I get these beanie baby containers from? And that's what these are called. They're beanie boxes or beanie baby display cases. And all of these I got used from other breeders. I got a case from someone at a fish auction that was selling them individually. And I was like, well, I'll take all of them. And then I got some from a breeder who was getting out of breeding bettas and he had tons of these so I bought them used um, they're hard to find new and they're kind of expensive if you buy them new you can look online just google beanie baby display cases and all kinds of them will pop up but they usually end up going for like two bucks a piece or more plus shipping and shipping is crazy for a case of these so um i like them but were i coming into this hobby new and not able to get these used i would go with either mason jars they come in 32 ounces or 64 ounces or um, ccw containers which is what these are um these can be purchased from CCW distributors, ccwdist.com. I'll put a link in the description, but um, they're from that website. And these are really nice. They're plastic. They come with lids, and shipping is built into the price. Um, they come in different sizes, too. These are, I think, five and a half inch squares. They have four inch squares. Um, they range from like really small ones up to a gallon size so they're a really good alternative and then another alternative if I go around here are these hand grip containers and these are from Walmart the gallon size costs like two something a piece, so not exactly cheap, but I think they have a smaller one that will work. Um, and if you buy them slowly over time, they're, you know, not too expensive. Um, a lot of people use deli containers, 32 ounce deli cups. I think I have one. You will have seen these when I cleaned my jars before, but 32 ounce deli cups. A lot of brooders use these. Of course, the downside of a smaller jar means you have to change water more often. And how often you change water really is determined by your water quality. So like I've shown in my past videos, I have ammonia in my water. So because of that, I have to do lots of water changes so that my ammonia level stays low. If you don't have ammonia in your water, you can go longer between water changes because your ammonia level will not be as high as mine. Um, but yeah, those are some of the options that you can use for jarring your bettas. Some people do divided tanks. Um, the reason I don't really like that idea, uh, one, cross-contamination. You know, if one fish gets sick, they all get sick. And another, when you're breeding them for show, you can't card them if they're in a divided tank. At least not easily. So carding is where you keep them from seeing each other. You block them. 
Um, I use index cards. These were, I think, five by eight, and I cut them down. They used to be this size. Um, so I blocked their site so that they can have privacy and have their territory and feel calm. And when I remove the card, they get territorial and they will flare with their neighbor to try to defend their territory. And when they flare is when they best show off their form. So that's why we card them and that's why I don't really like um, using divided tanks to jar out fry. I know some people that do it and they have good success with it. It's just not something that I personally like. So those are some options. Beanie Baby containers. If you have the money, you know, I like them. Personally, if I could do it over again, I would go for jars that were shorter and deeper rather than tall. Um, the good thing about tall containers is you can fit a bunch on a shelf, but um, it's almost a wasted space because the fish can only swim up and down, whereas if it's swimming back and forth, that's a little bit better exercise for the fish. Um, but they're nice. They're really great for taking pictures. They're easy. And, you know, you can fit a whole bunch of them on a shelf. I think I can do nine on a three foot wide shelf. So, um, they're nice, but I would not pay for them new because I just think it's too much. You can get deli containers for as low as like 16 cents a piece um, if you buy them in bulk. Mason jars are kind of a mid-range but the thing about them is they're glass so they're really easy to clean and sanitize. You can put them in the dishwasher. These scratch really easily. These will scratch probably. So they all have their advantages and disadvantages and you just have to see what you can get and what works for you. If you watch Inglorious Betta's channel, she likes the gallon sized um, containers and she only keeps a few fish. Whereas I like to keep a few, I like to breed more strains and keep more fish. So I use smaller jars, it's a trade off. But I also have to do a lot more water changes so, you know. There's always trade-offs, you know, more space, less water changes, but less fish, less space, more water changes, but more fish. Glass is easier to clean, but it's heavy and it's harder to take pictures in. Um, plastic is lighter and um, easier to take pictures in, but it scratches super easily and these break super easily if I drop them accidentally. So. That's just a little bit on my jars. I get this question a lot, so I figured I'd address it. Um, Cause I'm sure not everybody reads the comments when I'm answering questions in the comments. So that's just a little bit on jars. I don't think I have anything else worth showing you today. I didn't do anything super exciting besides I just organized everything. So I have bins and stuff up there that had gotten all crazy and I got everything put back nicely. Uh, I did get that 10 gallon tank taken down finally and I'm going to disinfect it and get it all set back up. So that's it. Um, the next big project is I need to reorganize my airlines. Um, it's been, wow, almost a year since I set up the fish room. And I've added tanks and I've rearranged stuff, but I haven't reorganized my airlines since I've done that. So I have, you know, airlines from a this manifold up here that are going all the way down to like this tank and this tank and so I'm gonna 
reorganize them so it makes more sense so that the air coming from up there goes to these top tanks and then these tanks and then these tanks and it works its way down because I do have it numbered but now the numbers are all out of order because I've moved airlines around and stuff so that's the big project for tomorrow so okay I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Cheeky says, have a good night and have a good Monday.